Yes, sir. And he made the midst of the furnace as it had been a moist, whistling wind. So that the fire touched them not at all. Neither hurt nor troubled them. Then the three, here's the part that I want you to get. Here's the praise part that I want you to get. Then the three, as out of one mouth, <laughs> praised, glorified, and blessed God in the furnace. Now I got three more praises of their song and their praises. And I'm going to pass this around after service so y'all can read it. They thought of any and everything God had made, and they said, y'all better bless them with us. Just a few examples. Oh, oh, all ye works of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. All ye heavens, bless ye the Lord. All ye angels, bless ye the Lord. All ye waters above the heavens, bless ye the Lord. All ye powers, bless ye the Lord. All ye stars of heaven, bless ye the Lord. For every shower and every dew, bless ye the Lord. Fire and heat, bless ye the Lord. Winter and summer, bless ye the Lord. Night and day, bless ye the Lord. Ice and cold, bless ye the Lord. <laughs> y'all ain't with me up here. I'm sweating for no reason because y'all ain't trying to come out. Oh my God, in Zion. They ask with, look at somebody say one mouth. That means the level, the attitude, the significance, the severity of their praise was all in one accord. Yes, yes. They meant that God was great and greatly to be praised. As with one mouth, they blessed him. Hallelujah. As with one mouth, they blessed him. Hallelujah. As one mouth. Y'all, are y'all getting that? One mouth. They praise, glorify, and bless. See, and, and Nebuchadnezzar said, look, he, he was so amazed at what he was looking at, he had to question himself. He said, look, didn't we bind three and throw them in the furnace? They said, true. He said, well, come along. Because it's four of them. Loose! <laughs> and one of them looks like the Son of God in there with them. What is really going on? The Lord is killing them. And Jesus that came in and saved to them. Yes! Yes! The loose you in your pit because you had a pit praise. Woo! And they, as with one mouth, praised, blessed, and glorified. While they were in the pit. Hallelujah. We know the good news that after Nebuchadnezzar yelled in the furnace, come on out of here. And they walked out and he said, my God, this God you serve must be somebody. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. The folks that throw you in the pit gonna be the one to bring you out. Yes, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The same people that set the trap for you are going to be the ones to pull you up out. And not only will they pull you out, but they go bless and serve God too. Let, let's quickly, quickly, quickly go to Genesis. Genesis. I'm a, I had a whole bunch of reading, but we're not we, we, we going to keep moving with this thing. You all know the story of Joshua. Of oh, Jonathan, I'm sorry. You all know the story. So let me let me get a good starting point. Now we understand that Jacob Israel loved this son more than he did the others because he was of his old age, is what the word said. He had him when he was older. And he given him a, a coat of many colors. And Jonathan did. Joseph, sorry, did a, did a not so wise thing. Because the Lord gave him a dream and he revealed it too quick. 
Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? He began to tell it too quick and he didn't realize that he had, he was telling what God promised him to all of his haters. Be careful who you share, what you share. Come on somebody. Now keep in mind your steps are going to be ordered regardless. But use wisdom as to who you speak what God is speaking to you about. Why? Because those words can never be redacted. Come on, somebody. Once they're spoken, they are out. Amen. So let's go back to Genesis 37. So he got the coat of many colors and he spoke them. And the dreams that he had, as you read the story, is that he was out in the field with his brothers binding sheaves. And their sheaves began to bow down to his sheep. And then he had another dream that was similar, where the whole house and the family began to bow to him. And he didn't know, he told his brothers and he told his father, and his father said, what does this mean? And he rebuked him a little bit and he said, how is it? Are we all going to be made to bow to you? But his father, even in the rebuke, the Bible says that he remembered what Joseph said. Although he didn't necessarily like what the boy had said in the dream, he realized that there was something special still about this child, and he never would forget it. That's what the Bible said. So John, uh, Joseph's father tells him that when well, the next day comes, or a, day come, a couple days come, and they're out, and they're in the field, and Joseph's still at home with his father. His father said, where are your brothers? Are you not out gathering with your brothers? And he said, well, they left me. I don't know where they are. He said, go find them. So Joseph goes out into the field and he's looking for his brothers. And the man meets Joseph and he said, I heard your brothers say that they were on their way to Dauphin. Go on to Dauphin and you'll find your brothers there. So Joseph's traveling and he sees his brothers afar off. His brothers see him afar off and they begin to conspire. Mind you, he, we read that he had his dream, and he told them of his dream, and they hated him all the more. They already hated him because he had the dad's love. But they hated him all the more after they learned of his dream. And they began to conspire, and they said, let's kill him. Some of y'all got some folks that don't like to see you prosper. They don't want to see you prosper. They don't mean you any good, and they are thinking, how can we sabotage? I can't hear nobody. I'm the only one with somebody that wants to see me doing good. So Reuben, they, 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 they plot, and Reuben says, well, let's not kill him. Reuben was feeling bad. You know, he wasn't as bad as the other brothers. He didn't really care for Joseph, but he didn't want his brother to die. So he turned and told the business brothers, let's not kill him. Let's just throw him in the pit. And in Reuben's mind, after the brothers have gone, I'll go back to the pit and I'll retrieve Joseph and I'll take him back to dad and keep him safe. Well, the brothers threw him in the pit. And Reuben leaves to work. And while they are ready to eat, getting ready to eat, they look down yonder and here comes the Midianites. And he says, Judah speaks up. And Judah says, wait a minute. What good would it be for us to just kill him other than the fact that we're going to be satisfied? Let's not kill him because we can still tell dad that he's dead. But let's make some money while we're at it. Let's get him out the pit and let's sell him. So the Midianites come on down the way and they go now catch this. The same pit. I can hear the Holy Ghost talking to me, y'all. The same pit that folks will throw you in. Yeah. The same mess yeah. that you're in. Yeah. The same folks who threw you in the mess, put your name in it. I can't hear nobody. Will be the ones to bring you out of that pit and bring you to your place of purpose. Yeah. 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 Now, we're talking about praise, aren't we? I haven't forgotten. Take a moment and think about who it was that spoke up. Who spoke up? Judah. And what is Judah 
Judah, who are Judah are the princes. Y'all ain't 